Good morning. I hope you've been well. Today I'm making a red velvet double layer cake. It's my first time working with red velvet anything, so I'm pretty excited. And I've gathered all of the ingredients that I am going to need for the cake itself here. There's still another step after this for the icing, which will be a cream cheese based icing. I think the most interesting ingredient and the most exciting one is this, which is buttermilk. And I wanted to let you know that right now there's a little bit of a shortage <laughs> on the shelves of red food coloring. I think because Valentine's Day just happened and probably a lot of people were doing their home baking. So I was very lucky to find this on a quick trip this morning at our local Ranch Fresh store. The recipe calls for four eggs to be separated. I never have fun separating eggs, so I'm gonna try and do this with you this morning. Here are my eggs. You can see the butter here. That, that's the other trick for this recipe is that it calls for several items to be at room temperature. So the butter needs to be at room temperature, the eggs need to be at room temperature, and so does the buttermilk. So it's already sitting out here warming up a little bit. Let's see if I can do this without an issue. I think the trick to separating eggs is to get a nice clean half crack so that you can start pouring off the white and then you just switch through the yolk from one side to another as the, the white spills out into one bowl. And then when you think you've got enough of the white and don't break the yolk, you can transfer the yolk to the other little bowl. I think that's got it. There we go, that's one. Rotger Augen, Lichterschein, Lichterschein, und das Vieren bunt und bunt, wie dein magik wilde Fluss. I guess it's inevitable to get a bit of the white in with the yolks. And I think that doesn't hurt as much as it does to get yolk in with the whites. I've got my two pans ready here. They're greased already with butter. Make the cake. Whisk the flour, baking soda, cocoa powder, and salt together in a large bowl. Set aside. So we've got cake and pastry flour. I've also learned the hard way in the past with flour and cakes that if you use all-purpose flour, it's not really all-purpose. It's much better to have cake flour or pastry flour when you're making those two items. It's a lot lighter and fluffier. So let's dip our cup in. <laughs> very crumbly already, the flour on its own. One teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon. Baking soda. Ah. I always tap it in and then stir it in gently. Try to mix the dry ingredients really well before anything else goes in that's wet. Boop, boop. Where's my salt? Half teaspoon salt. Two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. Uno. Dos. The next step is to combine our butter and sugar together. So we've got half a pound of butter here getting to room temperature. I'm just going to scoop it down into here. And next we need two cups of white sugar. One cup, two cups 
of white sugar. I'm going to get my mixer out now. I love this little thing. it a little bit but it's a nice soft mixture right now don't you just love this bowl it's another one of those antique items that I have in our kitchen here and I just love it I don't know exactly where it came from but I like to think that it also belonged to my grandmother at some point I don't know maybe my mom will recognize it but it gives me a warm feeling just to know that it's been around for a long time. The older you get, the more you appreciate old things. <laughs> now that we've done that, we're going to add the vegetable oil, the egg yolks, a little bit of vinegar, the vanilla extract, and we're going to beat that on high for a couple of minutes. Here's my big jug of vinegar. Okay, how much vinegar do we need? Just a teaspoon. Oh gosh, imagine me getting a teaspoon out of this giant container here. I better not pour it over that or I'm going to ruin it, aren't I? Here we go, here's a little plate. I can just try and tip it here. Get a tiny bit, oh, there we go, look at that. Yes, I always add tongue trills in to my work. Okay, set that over there. Vinegar, oil, one cup of oil. Put the oil in. I'm gonna beat my egg yolks up now. to mix these ingredients together. And put the mixer on high for about two minutes. I like this bowl a lot also because it has this ridge here and it makes it really easy to hold it up and transfer items out of it. I really wanted to show it to you today. That's why I picked it to start with. Now I know. <laughs> this is also the point at which we are going to add the red food coloring gradually. And it calls for gel food coloring. I wasn't able to find that, uh, but it calls for one to two teaspoons of red gel food coloring. I've got the liquid here. I'm still gonna use one to two, maybe one and a half. We'll just see how things go when I start adding the color. I'm going to put in about a third of the dry mixture here now. Keep some aside, stir that around, and pour some of the buttermilk in. Not all of it. Put this over here. It calls for the mixer to be on a lower setting this time. So I think we want a slow and gradual mixture. in but I'm going to go for the food coloring now. I think it might be sealed inside the lid. Yep. 
This is not something you want to spill either. So one to two teaspoons. Here's a teaspoon. This is the magic of red velvet. There's my first teaspoon of the red food coloring. Back with the mixer. Oh, it's a gorgeous color. It looks like beets. I read somewhere that you can use beet powder as a, a substitute if you really want to go natural with it. I'm just gonna scrape the sides down with the spatula to mix in whatever powder I've got kicking around the edge here. I'm thinking this is not a recipe that you can cut any corners on or try and rush. And now we're starting to get a beautiful pink mixture. So as I add the rest of the ingredients here, I think in two more steps, I'm going to put another full teaspoon of the red velvet, of the red food coloring in. So I've got one more bit of buttermilk and dry goods there to mix in after this step. And the food coloring again. I think it's pretty clear that if you add the food coloring to the dry goods, it's not a great idea. You won't, won't get the distribution that you need. So adding it here with the wet is much smarter. And now because I feel like I'm an accident waiting to happen still, I'm going to put the lid back on this baby here. And the final addition of the dry goods. and the buttermilk. All right. Look at this gorgeous color. Wow. I've now got the egg whites transferred into this mixing bowl and I'm going to whip them up now. to mix it on high for three to four minutes until stiff peaks begin to form and you can see I've got a couple going there so this is what makes the cake very fluffy and it says to mix it gently in with the batter to fold it gently in with the batter now I'm just going to use the spatula and stir it on in here. Wow, I don't think I've ever put egg whites into a cake mixture at this point. This is new to me. <laughs> oh, it's going in nicely. It takes a while to get the egg whites completely fold it into the mixture and so that all of the uh, little visible pieces have blended in and disappeared but I think I finally got it now and yes it's very fluffy very silky and quite delicious looking so next we're going to put it in the pans dividing it roughly in half well exactly in half <laughs> might take a bit of finessing to get them even but it's not that difficult to do let me taste that mm. just gonna do a little bit of 
mucking about here to make sure that I've got two evenly divided cake pans because I want the two layers to be the same height if I can get them that way. I think that looks pretty good. There, I think we're good. We've got two pans ready to go in the oven. I've set the oven at 350, it's already preheated and now the timer is set for about 30 minutes. Then we'll bring them out and see how they look. In the meantime, I'm going to begin to prepare the icing. Step two, the icing. I've got room temperature butter and cream cheese ready to go here. I pulled them out before I started baking the cake. And the other ingredients are icing sugar, of course, vanilla, and a little bit of salt. I also have my red food coloring here just in case I decide to add a little bit of red to the icing as a decoration when I'm finished. That's in my mind right now. I'm really not a cake decorator. I won't even pretend to be good at that. <laughs> so I'm just going to play it by ear and see what happens. Let's mix these two together first. say when you're making the frosting to add the icing sugar a little bit gradually which I think is a good idea and also I'm going to put the vanilla in with this wet mixture to start with and just beat it a little bit more before I start with the sugar one and a half teaspoons of vanilla one and a bit. Yep, you can see it all came off of the beaters now, so it's it's almost an icing in, it, in and of itself at this point. Okay, here's the fun part, icing sugar. Now before I finish with adding the icing sugar, I'm going to just put a pinch of salt in here. And the reason we're adding salt is just to take the edge off a little bit of the sweetness of the icing. There we go, a couple of pinches of salt. Ought to do it. We've got a beautiful stiff icing here. amazing ah the timer is going off 30 minutes let's pull these out and see how they look oh wow they've really risen up I guess that's the egg whites at work I think they'll, they'll fall fairly quickly And what the directions say, and this is typical for any kind of cake, I think, or even banana bread, get your toothpick ready and stick it in the center. If it comes out clean, then the cake is ready. Here's the big test. They look a little bit wet. Oh my gosh. Look, it's clean. Let's try the other one. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. And out you come. Oh, that one's got a little bit on it. So I'm thinking five more minutes. And it's five minutes. Okay. I think this has got it. Got a new toothpick here for the first one. It feels a lot better now and it looks better in the middle. Yeah, nothing on there. And I'll try the other end of this guy. I can tell there's texture to it when I put it in. So yes, they're done. So these have to cool off before two things happen. Before I pull them out of the pan, I would think they should cool a little bit. 
and then they're going to cool on the racks and be completely cooled before I assemble the cake and start adding the icing. It'll be a while before the cakes are cool enough to add the icing, so I will take a little break now until I feel like they're ready to go. One thing that I'd like to share with you about how the cakes turned out is that you can see they don't look red. So that tells me I didn't put enough food coloring in, live and learn, but I'm sure they're still going to taste delicious. So I will call this my almost red, but not really cake. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure it's velvet enough. <laughs> so what I've got here are the, you can notice the top of the cake is a little bit round on both of them, which is normal. And the recipe says that you can take a serrated knife and slice the top off. The way that I put them together is simply that the bottom piece, I flip it over so it has a flat surface to work with. And I usually pick the one with the roundest top for the top of the cake. So I think that I will, hmm, they're both kind of equal. I think I will flip uh, this one over for the bottom and use that one for the top. Hello again. I'm back and finally the cake is cooled down enough to allow me to start to put the icing on. And here I have my pretty bowl again. I just love this bowl. Oh, it's almost like before you start a step like this, I hesitate because everything looks so nice now and I'm so afraid of ruining it, but here goes. Oh, it's a nice texture and it's gonna stick just fine to the cake. I think this is going to go a lot faster than I had anticipated as well. The tough part is the sides of the cake and uh, making sure that things are looking pretty and even around the side. Now that I've done the middle, I think that's enough on the middle. I don't wanna be too cheap on that, but I also don't wanna run out when I'm doing the top and the sides. So, but it's a beautiful texture, as I said, and I think that it's going to be fine. So let me now add the second piece of cake. There we go. Wow, look at that. I think I might just bring the cake like this. What do you think? Okay, let's see if I can figure out a system. I already told you that I am no icing expert, so I have no guarantees of how this is going to turn out or even look when I'm done, but I'm going to do my best and I think that's all that really counts. mucked about with it enough. I'm going to just stick it in the fridge for a few minutes with the cover on. And then I'm going to come back to it and add the decorations. I'm now going to attempt to finish the decorating on here. I have this tiny tube of red gel and I don't know if I can truly do a good job, but I'm going to try to write happy birthday. <laughs> some 
red food coloring to the icing now too. I still have a lot left over. And I'm just gonna try to make little rosettes here all the way around. They're pink, but hey, that's okay. Und gar Augen Lichter Schein, Lichter Schein, und das wir in Bunt und Bunte Bild ein magisch wilder Fluss. Oh my! I'm pretty happy with this. There's a bit of space at the top, so I'm just going to add a giant rosette here. We're finished. Happy birthday, Liz. In die schöne Welt hinunter Lockt dich dieser Strom ist groß Lockt dich dieser Strom ist groß In die schöne Welt hinunter Lockt dich dieser Strom ist groß